times on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength And my story isn't over My story's just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does
I'll thank you later. Uh, good morning, church. Welcome to FRC, and thanks for connecting with us to worship our great God together uh, this morning. Hello and welcome to everybody watching uh, online uh, or on cable, however you're able to connect with us. We're grateful for that. Uh, if we have any visitors this morning, thank you for being here. Uh, glad you're able to join us as well. If you have any questions uh, in this uh, season that we are in, uh, we're asking you to go to our website so you can get our email addresses. Uh, you can go to frcusberg.org, go to the Organize tab, and it's got all of our contact information there, phone numbers and whatnot. Um, so we would like to connect with you that way. Uh, we have a couple of announcements today. Uh, first, in preparation for our Thanksgiving service, uh, Pastor Bob is asking us to email him a picture of what you're thankful for. Um, whether that's family or friends or a special piece of God's creation, uh, whatever comes to mind as you stop and think about what you're thankful for. Uh, if you don't know what email is, then there's this, you can send a message directly to uh, Bob uh, through social media, um, or you can post it on social media for everybody to see. We would just ask that you would include in your post the hashtag thankfulfrc. And if you not quite sure how this whole hashtag thing works. What you do, if you're posting on Facebook or Instagram or something like that, normally you put a little caption under your picture, right? Uh, when you're done with talking about what your uh, caption is, then at the very end, in its own one word thing, you find the pound sign, right? Find the pound sign, put that in there, and then put thankful FRC all in one word, right? So all together, Pound sign, thankful, FRC. Capitalization doesn't matter, right? And then that allows us, when you post it, to be able to find it. Uh, and if you click on it, if you see someone else and you click that little hyperlink, then you'll see other people's thankful, FRC. There you go. I have Connor Verdusco, who's going to come up here in a minute and tell me how terrible of a job I did explaining hashtags. Come on up, Connor. But we want to get those in. So uh, if you could do that this week, that would be excellent. Get those pictures on social media or to Pastor Bob, however you're able, uh, with what you're thankful for. With that, Pastor Doozy has an announcement for us. Connor, go ahead. All right, good morning, church. Um, so I'm Connor Verdusco, and I have a quick announcement I want to make to all of you. So I'm a part of a group called Teens for Life. We are a pro-life group that is against um, pro-choice. And we also, um, we've done stuff like stand outside Planned Parenthood and held signs. So I'm here to tell you guys that next Saturday, you can put this on your calendars, next Saturday, November 21st, from 11 to 1.30 1 p.m., we're gonna be hosting a brat fry at Mentink's Piggly Wiggly, and all the donations that we make will go to Anchor of Hope, and our church has done stuff for Anchor of Hope before with the baby bottle drive, and our group was planning on doing that this year, but we couldn't because of COVID-19. So instead, we're gonna be holding a brat fry at Mentink's next Saturday, and another reason why you guys should come out is because I'm not going to be the one grilling, so the food should be that much better. So if you guys like brats or burgers, come out to Mentinks next Saturday. Thank you, Toby. That, thanks for leading that. Um, we're also gearing up for our annual giving experience, uh, and so do look at the bulletins or on our uh, digital uh, bulletin announcement sheet uh, because it has a lot of great creative ideas that uh, are going to help us continue uh, this annual tradition of ours, uh, thanks to the serve team. And they've come up with great ways um, in the midst of this season. Uh, one of those still will include uh, a food delivery. And so if you're willing to do that, uh, we need you to sign up by November 29th. And I believe there's a sign up on the Children's Ministry Board. I'm looking for Loren for a yes, that's going to happen. Yes, yes, perfect. Uh, so if you can help out that way or call into church and let us know you're willing to help with a food delivery. But check out those details in the bulletin, all right? Uh, also, along the uh, lines of preparing for Christmas, uh, the boxes for Operation Christmas Child are due today. So contact Cindy Hoyting if you have any questions about that. Uh, so be sure to check out all the rest of the announcements in the bulletin uh, so you're all up to date on all that's going on here at FRC Oostburg. Uh, let's go to God together in prayer. Almighty God and Father, it is because of you that we are able to experience blessing. And God, you allow us to also go through hard times. You allow us and give us the ministry to come alongside others who are 
going through difficult times and you use things that have happened to us to share our testimony, to share the experiences we've had with you and the love we've experienced from you to be able to share that love with others. And God, we're grateful for that. And we ask that you would help us to persevere through the times that we are to go through that are difficult. For you know the plans that you have for us. We're grateful that we can trust you in your work, in our lives and in the lives of those around us. And by your Holy Spirit, we ask, help us to speak honestly and speak truthfully about who you are, that you're there, and that your love is for anyone and everyone that turns to you. We're grateful, God, that we can come and worship you this morning. We ask your blessing on the rest of our time this morning. Pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. All right, if you would please stand before we recite, if you're able, uh, please stand. We're going to recite our memory verse. We're going to say the reference at the beginning, then we'll say the verse, and then we'll say the reference at the end. Let's share this together. Romans 8, 37b. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Romans 8, 37 CJ, I'm going to ask you to keep that up there. Just take a look at that verse and look at what that says as you prepare yourself and we prepare to worship our great God this morning.
Let us go to God together in prayer. Author and finisher of our faith, you who have set our feet firmly on freedom's foundation, we praise you and give you thanks. Witnesses from of old have taught us of the deliverance of God's people from hardship and danger. Scripture recounts their covenant promise, you will be our God and we will be your people. You, O Christ, have sealed a new covenant in your blood and won for us the victory of life everlasting. Draw us, O God, into a right relationship with you and with our neighbor. Help us to stand fast by your spirit and to trust in you. Make our inheritance as your sons and daughters a leg lasting legacy, one that we are eager to pass on to those who follow us. Help us by our example to teach them what it means to love you completely and our neighbor as ourselves. We come, O oh God, praying for our neighbors, both near and far. We think of those who are among us, who live near us, who we consider our neighbors, and maybe some who we haven't thought of before as our neighbors, and we lift them up to you, O oh God. Specifically this morning, we think of those who are close to us, among our fellowship here, and those of them who are recovering from medical procedures. We lift up to you Dale Tempus, recovering from shoulder surgery. Gary Gabriels, recovering from knee replacement surgery. Jason Mills, recovering from back surgery. Bill Schmidt from rotator cuff surgery. Nancy Dan Hunick from surgery on her arm. Mary Jo Onk from hip replacement surgery. And Henry DeBlay from procedure to help him with his eating. All these, O oh God, we pray for your healing power to be with them as they recover. Grant them patience in their recovery. Grant them strength in their recovery. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will walk with them in this time. We also lift up to you Dolores Rathel, who will have outpatient surgery this week. God, may you surround her, too, with your peace and your presence. Bless those who will be caring for her. Grant the wisdom and the skills that you have given to them, the medicine that is at their fingertips, your blessing, that it may work healing in her body and for good reports for her. We lift up to you those in our family who are dealing with cancer. I think of Gary Feldman dealing with pain now in his legs and undergoing testing to trying to figure out what's going on. And we pray, oh God, for answers and relief from the pain. We continue to lift up Randy Prinson, E.J. Callao, Verla Westerbeek, as they con continue their treatments, some maintenance, some new treatments, and oh God, in all these things, we pray for the most impact, most effective thing with that treatment with little side effect. And we give you thanks as we continue to remember Roly Robertink, and we pray, oh God, you'll help him regain strength, and we pray that that cancer stays in remission for him. We pray for others of our family who are in care facilities. We think of Carol Klarman as she adjusts to new surroundings now at the Faith Home on Haven Drive campus of Pine Haven. Grant her, O oh God, your presence to make her feel at home there. We continue to lift up to you Muriel Laterbor, who's still dealing with pain from her shingles, and O oh God, may you bless her with relief from that. We remember Sandy Peters as she continues to try to adjust to uh, her new home in Cedar Grove Gardens. O oh God, may she sense your presence with her as well. And we lift up Pat Zermond, O oh God, whose health is continuing to decline. And we pray, O oh Lord, for you to surround her with your peace and your power in this time. In a time of often uncertainty, O oh God, may you be something who is certain to her 
in all of this. We lift them before you and all those that are on our hearts and our minds, O oh God. Uh, we bring them before you, knowing that you know full well each scenario, each situation, and each need. We pray for those, O oh God, our neighbors who are serving you, those who are serving you close, those who are serving you far away. In some places, O oh God, they're facing persecution and peril, and we, we pray for your Spirit to be with them, to offer them protection and peace, that they may carry out their ministry with confidence and joy. Today, we think especially of our mission partners in Abraham and Sayuri Kistozaki. And we pray for them, O oh God, as they come into a time of December, of which is always an evangelism opportunity, as people in Japan seek to want to know about Christmas. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will use them to be a light, to shine to the light, the light of Jesus Christ. That through their holiday worship, through their Christmas celebrations, O oh God, others will come to know the joy that is in the birth of Christ. We pray that for them, but we pray that here too. And in this year of darkness, that the light of Christ's birth would shine brightly. So in this year with COVID numbers on the rise yet in our area, oh God, we pray for your presence here and around the globe where this is happening. Surround us and keep us, oh God, that we may indeed shine forth with the good news of the gospel, that we may bring your good news to bear, that people may see it in us as we live our lives in this unusual time. Grant us faith. Grant us courage for the facing of these days. Oh God, and we pray for our leaders, leaders globally, leaders locally. We pray for our nation in a time of transition. Grant your wisdom and your grace in a time of division and anxiety. And oh God, we pray for those who lead us and seek to help us, both in government and in the medical field. May you bless them, protect them as they carry out their work on our behalf. May they seek you in all that they do. God, we are so grateful that we can bring our prayers to you, knowing that you know us, that you hear us, and that you are God and you alone. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. In these unusual times, it's kind of hard to figure out how to do a children's sermon, but we're going to do one of those today. And kids, you can just stay seated if you're here, right where you're at, but know that as you leave today, uh, there is a little plastic container that is on a table in the foyer for you to grab some starbursts on your way out, okay? So um, try not to look forward to that too much that you just kind of miss everything else that goes on here. But I'd just like to take a moment to talk to the kids this morning and just to talk to them in this time. I'm wondering if you can ever share with me, kids, if you've had a bad day. Any kids here ever had a bad day, huh? Huh? Yeah, we have bad days. Sometimes we have bad days because we get hurt and we might need one of these, right? Uh, Sometimes it's nice to have one of these to cheer us up when we have a bad day and we just kind of are looking for something to make us feel better this way. Or maybe you're having a bad day because you were bad. Maybe, you know, that happens, right? Sometimes you have bad and maybe mom or dad get out their phone and they set a timer and you're forced to sit in a chair and that's where you have to stay, right? Until that timer goes off, you're in time out. And so you're having a bad day. Or maybe you're having a bad day for some other reason. You can't be with your friends. Uh, things just aren't normal, and you're just missing someone or something uh, because of what's going on in our world, and you're just feeling bad. I want you to know today that the Bible reminds us over and over again that when we're having those bad days, even though sometimes we're in a bad mood and we feel all alone, you're not. God is always there for you. God is always there to hear you and remind you that God loves you. Remember, you can always go to him in prayer. And let's do that together now. Let's pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks that we can come to you on our bad days. When we're sad, when we're angry, when we're hurt, knowing that you love us, 
and that you care for us and that you are always there. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And kids, if you couldn't be here this morning, stop by the office. I'll have some Starburst for you. Let's turn to God's word for this morning as we turn to Psalm 44. This is the word of God. We have heard with our ears, O God, our ancestors have told us what deeds you performed in their days, in the days of old. You, with your own hand, drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm give them victory. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance, for you delighted in them. You are my king and my God. You command victories for Jacob. Through you we push down our foes. Through your name we tread down our assailants. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and put and have put to confusion those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually, and we will give thanks to your name forever. You have rejected us and abased us, and have not gone out with our armies. You have made us turn back from the foe, and our enemies have, forgotten spo- have gotten spoil. You have made us like sheep for slaughter and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a trifle, demanding no high price for them. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations, a laughingstock among the peoples. All day long my disgrace is before me, and my shame has covered my face. At the words of the taunters and revilers, at the sight of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, yet we have not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. Yet you have broken us in the haunt of the jackals and covered us with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God and spread out our hands to a strange God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Because of you, because of you, we are being killed all day long and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Rouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake, do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For we sink down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up. Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. This, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. When I was 16 years old, and before I had my own vehicle, one Friday night I went to my dad and said, hey dad, would it be okay if I borrowed your truck tomorrow to go to town with a friend? We just wanna hang out and kinda cruise around a little bit. And he's like, yeah, I don't need it tomorrow, so you can borrow my truck. And that was a special thing, because it was cool to take the truck. So I took the truck and had my Saturday of running around. And the next day, later that afternoon, my dad came to me and said, hey, Bob, yeah, what did you do yesterday? And my mind started to frantically go through, oh my goodness, what happened? Did I get a scratch or a dent in the truck and not know it? Did something happen to that thing while I was, uh, what's going on? I, I began to panic a little bit, right? Wondering what happened, I couldn't think of anything. I said, well, I just, Ron and I just went to town and kind of went cruising around a little bit, that was, that was it. 
Now, that was true. We went to town, but then we went to another town, and then we ran somewhere else, and then we went back to the first town. I wasn't thinking of that as I was panicking about what he was. He said, really? That's all you did? And I tell you, by that time, I'm feeling so guilty. I did something. I don't know what I did, but I did something. He said, do you know how many miles you put on the truck yesterday and how much fuel you went through? Yeah, we did just go here and then here and then here. It really wasn't a moment of discipline, although I didn't drive his truck for a while after that. But it was a more of a, just a time of making me think, of reckoning, of what I call calling me on the carpet, to think about what I'd done. Have you ever been called on the carpet? Or ever had to call someone else out on the carpet? Now, we have a lot of different thoughts maybe going through our head a little bit about what that means, but as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking it's about just kind of confronting someone with serious questions. Not necessarily discipline, just trying to make them think, just trying to come to them with the reality of a situation, honestly, forthrightly, in relationship. Call them on the carpet. This is what I believe, this is what I understand, so I'm trying to understand why this is happening. My question for this morning is, is would you ever call God on the carpet? Hmm? Would you ever challenge or reproach God? How many people are feeling really uncomfortable right now, right? This isn't something we like to think about doing. This is probably something that we might say, well, that's not right. You don't do that. That's inappropriate. Now, there's some of us who might admit there's been times in our lives when we've done that. But for many, it's probably something we say, wait a minute, no, you can't, that's not right, you can't do that. But what do we do with Psalm 44? If we don't think it's appropriate, what do we do with this, the Word of God? And the other Numerous psalms of lament found in that book. To lament, as we often describe it today, is to think of it as, you know, sharing our grief, to, to grieve, to be upset that way. But biblically, it's more than that. To lament has more depth and meaning to it. It means being willing to really go out there and say what you're thinking, what you're feeling but in a certain way, in a way of worship. So, are you willing to call God on the carpet? What do we do with that? How do we do this? What does this mean for us? Can we, in the midst of grief and frustration, really say what we're thinking to God? When we look at what happens in this psalm, we see biblically that's what's happening. And this psalm, like last week's psalm, Psalm 42, is written to the Korahites, which are a group that lead worship. This is a psalm meant for the leading of corporate worship. And while there's a personal note in the psalm when it refers to my God in this personal nature, much of this psalm is written corporately, we. We, right? It's in plural form. And the language it uses is really strong. I mean, we start looking at verse 9, and we start realizing what we're dealing with here. You have rejected and abased us, humiliated us, God. You have left us out here, hanging out to dry in the midst of our enemies. We have no protection. We have no way to beat them. We are done for. We have nothing left to do but to run and wait for them to come and overtake us. 
We're nothing but a byword, a laughing stock, a joke to our enemies, to the people around us. How can you do this, God? What's going on? It's amazing to note we are nothing but a a reason for them to taunt us. Strong language through those, right? Of what the psalmist, what the people are feeling. Can you imagine using this in worship together? Can you imagine using this words? How many of you pray something like this in your prayer life? Ever. I know. (laughs) I don't. I might feel like it at times, but I don't. This is strong language that the psalmist is using to express these really deeply felt emotions and thoughts. They are feeling like they are on the verge of being wiped from the earth. Twice it talks about we are like sheep waiting for slaughter. That's how low that they are feeling in this moment. Now, if we were to hear someone praying like this, we might think something like, wow, that's really someone who has kind of a weak faith, right? I mean, they don't really just trust God. You know, when things get tough, we just, you know, we just, we just take it and we just trust God because God's faithful. We just do that. Is that the way it is? Does it mean a weak faith to be able to pray this way? Or is it a strong faith that can pray this way? You see, this passage starts with some pretty powerful language as well. Did you pay attention to that as this all starts? It was all kind of happy and joyful, right? As the psalmist is remembering the relationship they have with God. Look at those words at the start of this again in Psalm 44. We have heard, O God, from our ancestors, from those who have gone before us, The history that is ours, the people that we know of, the people that we've trusted who've led us in our childhood to now, and now we know, we know their faith, and we believe in their faith, and we know the stories they told us, how it wasn't their hand or their arm or their doing, their work, anything that they did that accomplished their deliverance, their salvation, but it was all your hand, your work, oh God. You were the faithful one. You were the powerful one that led them, that cared for them. And that has turned into our trusting you, our faith, our believing in you, God. And we too have seen your hand at work in our lives. This psalm expresses a faith that is not only present and personal, it is historic and corporate. This is a faith that's being expressed of a group of people who have experienced and come to know a God who is faithful and powerful and sovereign and has done amazing things, his amazing deeds. This is not a weak faith. This is a strong faith that is rooted in a historic and personal relationship, knowledge of God. And it approaches God in faith to say, why is this happening? We know you. Where are you? It's a strong faith that's approaching God with this. Now, in all the laments, which is like 40-some different psalms that have laments in them, at least, Psalm 44 is unique from all the rest. And it's unique because of what comes after that strong language that's in the middle. If we pay attention to those verses that come, uh, starting at verse 17, right? Because often we think of when someone's lamenting and things are gone bad, What do we think of? Well, what did you do? Right? What did you do? You must have done something. You're being punished. Well, that can be and is often true. 
We do bad things, bad things sometimes happen. Punishment comes, that happens. But sometimes in life, there doesn't seem to be that correlation. I mean, sometimes in life we think we're going through something and we think, well, no one could deserve this at all. No one could deserve this kind of bad thing happening in their life. Well, let's first calm ourselves a little bit and remember that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of sin is what? It's death, right? But as we remember that, We remember this, that because all of sin and because our world has been impacted by sin, bad things happen, period. It's just this world. It's a sinful, fallen world. Bad things happen to good people, bad people, and really, who's truly good? But they happen. And that's something we often forget and something we really wrestle with at times because we want reasons. We want to be able to put some kind of logic and knowledge behind those things. To say this is happening for this reason or that reason. But really, sometimes the only reasons we see come later when we recognize how God was working in the midst of it. It really still doesn't give us a reason but it shows us that God truly was still with us in the midst of it. But bad things happen, and we see that, I believe, here as these people truly confess their place. We haven't forgotten you. We haven't forgotten your name. We haven't forgotten the the pact, the covenant, the promise. And we're walking in your way. We're doing what we need to do. We're following you, oh God, now again, realizing, i sure they realized, just as we realized, that we can't do that perfectly. They were still offering their sacrifices for atonement. But that's part of what it meant for them to be following faithfully. That even amidst their sinfulness, they were seeking God, following faithfully. So what's going on here, God? We're still turning to you. Why is this happening? How can you do this? We've done what we think we need to do. We're trying to live in faith. We're doing what we need to do. How could you do this? There are a few places in Scripture where we find this happening, right? We find it in the book of Job, with Job himself. When Job finally kind of lets loose on God a little bit with that and kind of calls God out on the carpet, we know what happens there. But we also see it in a sense with Jesus on the cross as Jesus quotes a psalm of lament from Psalm 22 when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, these cries of lament are not done in a lack of faith, they are done in the fullness of faith. Believing in who God is, believing in what God is capable of doing, and yet recognizing and wanting God to realize in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this suffering, in the midst of this sinful, fallen world, we're looking for that faithfulness. We're searching for that faithfulness, and we're wondering about that faithfulness as we're trusting in that faithfulness. Cries of lament are profound cries of faith. Because they're done in faith. You hear it all through this lament, and you will every lament. This relationship, this knowledge, this rooted and deeply held faith in God is present with the anger, is present with the questions, is present with the why. Because there are things that are just above our pay grade as followers of God, right? Why did God let there be a choice of trees in the garden? Why did that one tree have to be there? If 
you're all looking at me right now for an answer, I'm sorry. I don't know. I can give you a lot of theological thoughts about that, how God wants us to respond to who he is and what he does for us. But therein we see the coming of sin in our world. And a mystery that I don't understand. But God's think God desires in our confusion, in our trying to understand but not quite able to grasp it, as we wrestle with this, as long as we are doing this in faith, God is good with our prayers of lament. God desires our prayers of lament. In our world and culture today, I think we've lost the ability to lament. Maybe it's even within the culture of the church that's taught us, well, you don't talk that way to God. Well, yes, there are ways you don't talk to God, but there are ways you can and should talk to God. And laments are one of them. We live in a world that often tells us to hide our emotions, that tells us we're better off distracting ourselves from them or just just push them down, don't deal with them. We're told that we should just ignore them or maybe cover them up with a pint of ice cream or something like that. It'll all be okay. Or maybe we're told that we can handle it ourselves. And see, these cries of lament remind us and help us to continue to lean into what we believe. Right? Because that's what they're doing. They're leaning more deeply in the midst of doubt, in the midst of anger, in the midst of hurt. They're leaning more deeply into who God is and what God is able to do. That's the power of lament. That's the beauty of lament. Of being able to pray this way, the why, and to pray it in faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we come to you today, and we praise you because we know that you are God. We know that you are loving. We know that you are just. We know that you are almighty and that you are merciful. And we come to you today believing in you. You have established in us a faith through others, maybe parents, maybe friends, maybe others who have taught us about you and your mighty deeds of of way old and of more recent history, and we've experienced it in our lives. You are our God. But we may be here this morning, and we might be worshiping this morning, and we're feeling alone, lost, hurt, angry. Why, God? Why? Come to us, O God. Give us the faith. Strengthen us to lean into you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we continue to respond to our God and his word in faith, uh, we do that by responding in song. We do that by responding in our offerings. We do that by going out from this place to live in accordance to what God has taught us of how we can pray in such a way to God, how we can live in such a way to follow God. That is our offering. That is our living our life in faith uh, to God. And so let's celebrate the opportunity we have to do that by standing and singing the doxology together. Praise
Good and gracious God, we praise you and give you thanks for the multitude of blessings that we receive each day, even in tough days. So we praise you and we worship you, God, as we bring ourselves, we bring our gifts, we bring everything that we are to you to recognize that you are the one who graciously bestows so much on us. Thank you, O Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Go forth in faith, a deep faith that brings all of who you are to God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit go with you. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen.